Welcome to CESA, Newbies or Nuggets of Gold. My name is Tom Johnson, and what we're going to do today, we're going to look at you, getting you logged in, uh, getting students logged in, then we're going to look at what's new, what's important, and if some of you want to leave, you can, and uh, then we're going to really peruse, and then we're going to play around. So first of all, getting logged in, you should be able to go into your uh, Gmail account or your Outlook account. And there should be a, a, an email that looks uh, like this where you've been invited and you can join the school. If you don't have that, then you can uh, tell me now or email me and I can make sure that you get this invite. You might already belong to another school, in which case you can uh, sign in how you would and we'll transfer you into the school. Um, so let's try that now. After you get logged in, uh, you're going to see something like this. And right now, I'm in Claire's, and I'm using hers just so that we can see all the different students, so we can get them logged in. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go up into our um, wrench here in the top right-hand corner. We're going to notice that the student sign-in mode is, is like this, and we're going to get the home learning codes to get them logged in. Now we can print the codes or we can download the codes. I'm going to try to print the codes so we can just see them here. And this will auto generate a code for each student. It gives you the explanation up here what you need to do to get them in and then we look and this code is specifically for Anna. So Anna will go into the CESA app on her iPad most likely. We'll then go in uh, and say I'm a student. We'll go to the scan code and we'll scan this code here. Uh, likewise Chica would do the same and we want to make sure that we're giving the proper code to the proper student. Uh, we don't want them to get the wrong code and then they're in as the wrong student would have to sign them out. So you'll see that you have the codes for all of your students. Give them to the correct ones or help them in class is best. Okay. I'm going to switch back over to uh, my account now as a teacher. Let's switch into teacher. And let's look at what's new. So first and foremost, I'm going to start just going through this really, really quickly because we want to see some of the new things that are happening. One of the first things that you can do for uh, new is you can manage the student groups now. So if you come in here, uh, you can't just manage students, you can manage student groups. So if you have a group uh, maybe of your high, medium, and low math, that you're always going to want to send high, medium, and low activities or uh, send uh, certain e inbox emails to now we can go in there and we can create the group by just adding the students to the group So that's one of the first new features another new thing uh, you've got the family app uh, now is consolidated into the class app and so when students or when teachers or when parents especially go to the app store they're going to notice that there is no delineation of two different apps. They've consolidated it into one, and so there's now just one app. So that's a nice thing. Uh, the next thing that's new <clears throat> next thing that's new is messages messages come on in here and you're going to notice that messages looks totally different first of all i'm just going to go back for a second and just show you the messages is no longer here it doesn't say inbox anymore but now you're going to find out that messages is in the top and what they've done is they've allowed us to uh, email directly to students email directly to parents and you can see if there are parents of students, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I go in here and I'm going to create a new conversation and I'm going to start typing the name and when I start typing names, if I scroll down, you can see that 
Mia Wang is a parent and these are her students. And so if I want to, or her, her kids. And so if I want to put Sheng in there. Uh, right now, this is just a conversation between me and Sheng. But if I go back in and I'm going to get both the, uh, the kids, I'll come back down here and you can see I'm going to add Haiyan. And now this is a conversation that if I start typing anything, uh, I'm going to see that they can see one another, uh, they can respond, and they can, uh, I can block them, and I can get rid of, uh, uh, actually remove them from the conversation as well. So a conversation means that everybody is able to be heard, everybody is able to respond back, uh, and, uh, and they can be blocked or removed. Now the difference is if you are looking there's also announcements and so an announcement can be made where i'm sending out information but nobody's able to respond back also uh, you'll notice that announcements the members names are hidden and you can only send the message to this conversation so it's a one way directional thing when you're in announcements or when you're in uh, the uh, conversation, you can go up into the top right, you can edit the label, you can change what it's called. So this was just called Holly and Jade, but I put that this was an announcement at the beginning. You can uh, come in and you can actually edit, and I can come in here to uh, block Holly, remove from the conversation if I want to, and I can add more people to this group. It's also a nice thing to note that if I come in here, I can see who has read the message, and it will not just say sent, but it might say Holly has seen, or it might say Jade has seen, or, or both. And the nicest thing is that I can come and I can edit this message if I've typed something wrong, or I need to remove or add some information. So those are the new things about messages and conversations. Now if I go back to the class, the other last main new thing is the library. And the library is the activities, except what CISA has been uh, working on really aggressively, is creating lessons for you to be able to send out that are really, really thorough and deep and have everything in there. So some of the lessons that I would uh, ask you to try out and explore are maybe the first 30 days or getting started with CISA. And so I like the, I have gone in here, you might say, oh, I'm in third grade, I wanna see what lessons there are. So I might come into the uh, getting started with CISA. They've got the pre-built lessons in here. When you click on a lesson, I'm just gonna scroll down to look at, when you click on a lesson, so let's say lesson one, you can see that I've already saved this. If I haven't, it, it would, uh, it now adds it to the collection, okay? If I haven't, it, it's not pink. I can come in here to present to the class and I want to assign to the class. So <clears throat> when I've done all these, I'm just gonna uh, pre-built lessons, I save, I can present to the class. Presenting to the class uh, will take up the full screen. Let's see this shows what's in here and you can see everything. So you're going to draw something. You're, good at, you're gonna take a photo of yourself. You're gonna tell what you're excited about this year and you see that it's only one slide. I could add more to this lesson. Now, when I'm going to actually assign this to the students, because they won't see this yet, when I'm going to assign this, I can click on this, and I can choose who's going to get the lesson, which folder it should go in, what skills are there, or I can come down here and I can schedule this and say it's not coming out until this day at this time. And so that's another way, or I can have it come out immediately. The other details of this are put together by CISA. They're telling you the objectives. They're telling you the I will statement, which ISTE standard it is, the resources, and you've got certain downloads that you're able to take. Now the download looks like this. It's a getting started guide, and I'm going to add this into our uh, Google Classroom. So you have that, but you also have access to it right here in the lessons. Okay, so assign and details of the class lesson, download the handouts. You've 
got other things that are up here, but these are old. So now if you want to go, so this is a, we've looked at announcements, conversation, scene, editing, editing labels, and adding them to the group. We've looked at uh, new families uh, app, and we've looked at uh, managing student groups. Okay. So we've done logging in, getting the students logged in. What's new? What's important? So some of the things that are important that I'd like to just point out. Uh, <clears throat> important is to note that, and I'm just going to put this in here, uh, I am PT. And if you're not wanting to get so many emails, one thing that's important is coming up in here, going into your account settings, coming down here and turning off all of your email notifications, your push notifications and your tips and tricks. This way you're not going to get a whole bunch of emails that you really don't want to see. That's one important thing. Another important thing, and so let me just, uh, I've looked at notifications, important. Another important thing is that we, uh, ah, okay, here we are. Keep. No, sorry, that's that's not it. Okay. Uh, another important thing is that we should have students, so they should keep their names and uh, the, the names that are given to them by the system. Um, but, okay. Uh, an important thing is that we don't change our class name. Okay, so your name probably starts with, uh, let's look over here, and I come back into the uh, switch to admin. And we can see that the classes have a naming uh, system. So one DM, so that's grade one, and here are the teacher initials, and then the year. Please don't change that name. The other thing that you don't want to change is the uh, the actual student name. So if I come in here, uh, and we don't want the students to change their names either. So we've got their actual name with their last names in here. Kids love to go in and change their names and put in little new emojis and things like that. <clears throat> but it's also important that if you're going to uh, turn on the blog, that we don't have any last names. So if we go into manage students and you see, you don't want the display name to <clears throat> have their first and last name. So it's very important that we remove their last name if you're going to be blogging, okay? And those are the important things. And student name should be kept in the system, but uh, it's also important to, 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 if blogging remove last names. Okay, because it's a COPPA uh, and a FERPA law that we don't, any kids that are under 13 years old, if they're blogging and they're putting things out, can't have their uh, last name in there just as a uh, safety precaution. Okay. So we've looked at important, we've looked at this important. Okay, now <clears throat> what's important? 
and we're going to peruse. I'm going to take you through everything that uh, if you want to leave, now is the time because you've seen the important things for now. I'm going to jump back over to my class, uh, my search teacher. So you might have different classes. And if you have different classes, to choose different classes, you come over to the top left-hand corner and you can choose the class that you've got here. You might have a couple different classes. That's how you can switch between classes. If you've got a parent account as well and you want to switch, you come up to the cog and you can switch. It would say switch to parent. Or if you're in the parent account, you say switch to teacher. Okay. I did show you the account settings, but we'll have a look back in here. And you can change your name, your display name, you can add your picture, you can uh, make sure you see which email you, address you've got in there, add your phone number if you want, change your password. Uh, you can see the school directory of all the other teachers that are in here. Uh, you won't be able to manage the subscription, I don't think. <laughs> And as I said, turn on or turn off those email notifications. Uh, you can, if you've been here a couple of years and you've got archived classes, you can go in and manage by turning them on or turning them off. Sometimes you might want to turn them on again to see uh, what previous posts were that you want to kind of glean and uh, put them back or, or rework them. If you're a parent, in here you would also have uh, download journals and that's for taking all your sons or your daughters journals with you and it, it will allow you to uh, it brings everything as a nice folder with everything in there by class by date and it brings the videos it brings the photos it brings everything that was uploaded to Seesaw and puts it in one nice package now a note about downloading you want to make sure that you tell the parents that if they're doing that and they're leaving the school or moving from grade three to grade four, that they have a lot of room on their computer because this might take a lot of room if their student or their son or daughter has been at the school since uh, EY1 and is now uh, in grade three. They might have a lot of stuff in there. Um, you can see down here that you've got uh, a community status possibly. You might have a pioneer, you might have uh, become an ambassador, you might have become a certified educator. If you're doing that, then maybe you're helping me out right now. Just a little notes about that. You can come in and you can see our professional learning committee. I'm, I'm going to put this learning community, I'm going to put this link in as well. It's in our class, uh, Google Classroom. You can see more about it, you can join and become part of the Seesaw community. <clears throat> okay, so this just gives more details about pioneers and ambassadors. Jumping away from there, coming over to our top right, we've got tools, and the tools is under this little tool here, the wrench. We're gonna have a look. And as I said, important, please keep the class name the same. Uh, because we can use that to retrieve it later on when they're archived and uh, we come in and check throughout the years as a, a, an admin. You can come in, you can add different uh, teachers to your class. So maybe you want your TAs in there, you can come in, you can put in their email address and invite the teacher if they're not there already. You can change the class theme by the color, you can change the icon and put new one in, upload your own image, and make it all snazzy. Coming down to students, <clears throat> uh, you don't really need to change the code. Um, it's already set by default to the class code one-to-one -one devices. You, for the older kids beyond grade three, they might be sent in through email or Google, but I think this is all just, we're going to leave the class code at one-to-one -one devices. Uh, it, I don't think you're going to have shared devices. You can come in here and you can manage students. And this is where you can um, add another student that might not be in your class already. And you can type in their name. Um, let's start to see. 
uh, it might uh, be auto populating or you can uh, just type it all in let's if I click add student you have to put in their name first okay to add them in if you're having problems with adding students please just email me or call me down and I'll, I'll help you add students as I showed you you can um, now group <clears throat> And the home learning codes are how you can get the kids into your class. I would uh, also note that you can see the student numbers in here if you need that uh, for some reason, for some other uh, LMS or something like that. So if you're managing the students, you'll see the sample student and you'd see their student number under here. You might also see their email address if they put that in. The other information in here you will probably leave as default. So students can see each other's work. Yeah, leave that on. Uh, they can write on one another. They can uh, new items require approval. That means that they're not putting something in there that's uh, inappropriate without you vetting it and saying no. <laughs> uh, they students can uh, edit their own items and allow students to tag posts. Sure, you can you can allow that enable sample student I always like that on because then you can show what's going on without affecting somebody else's work and and finally you can turn on the enable student likes and uh, I would leave these because you might want them to comment on one another you can show them about the appropriateness of what good comments are and what uh, appropriate helpful comments are and things like that and new comments require approval I wouldn't do that too because you're making sure that they're not writing something inappropriate Okay, so I would keep those all default. Families. You can enable family access. So I'm just going to turn that on and show you the new things that are available. When you enable family access, you can invite the families here. Uh, and when I would invite families, I would also invite grandparents because they are often kind of sitting around just waiting and uh, they, they write and are more part of a seesaw community sometimes than parents who are busy I'm managing the families you can see which families are already signed up of course in here I, I won't be able to show you anything there's there's no families that are connected and but you can see which ones are we're still waiting to connect so this is good to come back to maybe a couple weeks in after you've sent out the invites and then you can uh, go into the pending family approvals it's almost redundant because that would be in the manage families and then families can like comment and share I would turn all these on as well and enable family comments and they require approval because it's amazing sometimes families also write things that might be inappropriate so it's nice to require the approval and be able to vet those uh, coming in to print those yeah Oopsie. Come back. So if you're inviting families, I don't have any students yet, but it would give you the codes like you saw and show them how you can send those home with the students or you can invite them by email or by phone. Okay. Uh, just a little note about families. We're going to be having these sessions uh, this, this year. So September 26th for the EY1 and so on and so forth. I'm not going to read through those for you. Um, coming back in, you can also enable blogs. And it was important, I'm going to say it again, because it's really important that uh, the last names need to be removed on your student list if you're going to be enabling blogs. So I'm just going to enable the blogs so you can see set up a public blog, come up with the name. Once the name is set, that's the name for life. So that blog is your blog that you would have uh, from now until whenever. And you can click on learn more to find out. It, it will give you more about the blog, setting them all up. How do you set it up? Enable, disable your blog. Okay, that's got a nice little video there. Once you've enabled the blogs, you can also go in and you can go to connected blogs and connected blogs are blogs where you're connecting with other CESA classes 
And so they might be, and there are CSAM classes anywhere around the world. Again, this link to this, so you can read more about it, is in our Google Classroom. So that's there, but that you can also access that in through once you turn on your blogs about connected blogs. So you can have something going on with kids in Peru, they're writing on your blog post and you're writing on their blog posts and uh, vice versa and whatever, lots of fun. Okay, managing folders. Uh, this, you might actually start to create folders and you might have things like links or repository, repository I used with kids for when they really liked certain items, they might put that in the repository folder to showcase, or we could call that portfolio, uh, portfolio or repository. Um, you might have a mass or English. You might have different folders that you want in there. Once you create the folders, then uh, you might want only the teachers to be able to put the items into the folders, or if they're uh, older, maybe in grade three, you might have the students uh, choose which folders things are going to go into. So that's up to you what you think is going to be uh, work best for your grade level and your class level. In progress, um, you can, I would keep these defaults and I'll show you a little bit more about progress at the end, but you might keep the four star rating, keep these colors and enable the rating scale. So I would leave all those defaults. The progress is part of this skills and we'll, we'll have a look at that later. You might just close this down now. If you need to reset your QR code and family invites, that's right here. And at the end of the year, if you want, you can archive up the class, but we'll do that for you. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about those two buttons. Um, we might want to talk about how often uh, posts happen uh, to go home. I think that there's nothing standard set uh, in our uh, book or for Shrewsbury, but it, it says post, you know, often and post uh, good things. Uh, but don't over post. Don't be tagging all the kids too often because it might be too much for parents. So you want to think about how much is going out, what's too much. Let's talk about this now. Okay. We've looked at the messages. We've looked at the library. That's all new. Uh, coming back in here into community, school, and my library, you can get to that here, or you can get to that up in here by assigning activity. <clears throat> And these, when I assign activities, are part of my library. Because I migrated from my last school, I, I brought all the activities that I had done before with me because I changed my name and put that in there. So this is my library of uh, activities that I've already made. You've also got the CESA community. This is the world community, but not official CESA activities. These are made by other teachers and educators around the world and you can uh, look everything up. There's all different grades, all different subjects and things that are in here, all different grades, but they aren't as uh, as well made necessarily as the Seesaw lessons because they're paying people to make these lessons. Whereas community is the Seesaw community which is just freely made. In the school, you can see what we've got for our school. So I'm just going to check, check, uh, check. And you can see who has made things here at Shrewsbury already. And you could heart that and then say, once you heart it, it goes into your library and then you can assign this activity. Once you uh, heart it, you can duplicate it and you can tweak it, make it a little bit different, but you can use the uh, information that's already in there. Okay. That's more about library, more about activities and adding. Now, <clears throat> they also have notifications. And once your class is going and people start posting things or adding things to the inbox and messages, all those notifications will show up here. So if you turn them off and you're not getting them to your email address, you can still come and check them. They're all right 
there. Pinning posts. If I come back over to my journal, right now this is uh, the default post that's in here, you could add something. So I'm going to uh, post student work. I'm going to put this in and uh, welcome to the teacher seesaw. When I'm doing this, maybe I put certain information about my class, maybe the schedule, maybe our calendar, who knows what's in there. I can also add pages. I'm going to get a little bit more into that after. But once I create this and I post this to the sample student, you can choose to put that to all students. <clears throat> so this is now a post. If I want this to stay at the top, I can come in here and I can pin to top. And that allows me to keep it at the top. The students will always see it. I can change certain information. And it's usually a thing that I like to do, usually a thing that's done. So uh, pinning posts is important. Now, when I come into the add um, up here and I assign an activity so say I'm going to come into my CSAT lessons I've already assigned uh, two but I'm gonna pretend that I'm third grade getting started with seesaw I could come into the lessons here and I could say I'm going to save that so it's in my library and I could come in and assign but maybe I don't want it to be right away so I'm choosing that it's going to be tomorrow and I don't want it to show up until 10 o'clock 10 o'clock and I'll press the check mark and if I have a certain group in there that I want to get this but not the others, then I'm going to edit the students in the folders and then I'll press assign. Okay. Coming back in, I'm going to go back to the journal. If I am posting something and adding, or the kids are doing this for the first time, when they go in to take a photo, okay, it's going to ask them, do you want to enable the access? Make sure that the kids enable access so they don't have to go in and turn it on later through the uh, Seesaw in general settings on their iPad. So that's a main thing that you want to uh, note Ensure that students allow access or enable access when they're taking a photo. Coming into drawing, uh, so we just went in there for a second, but I skimmed through it really quickly. You can type. You've also got this microphone, and so let's, I'm going to click on this for a second because uh, actually I don't think I can do this while I'm recording. Okay, so it's going to start a recording. And now it's recording. While I'm doing this, I'm going to pause that, and I'm going to say done, and I think I can see this recording. Later. Now it's recording while I'm doing it. Okay, so that was recording. I can uh, also come in here. Uh, I can draw, talk, record. I can put in a caption. So this is this is information about the post record my voice here. I can upload audio that I've already done. There we go. So that's captions added. Drawing, microphone, captions. If I want to change the pen or pencil size, double click on that and you've got different pen or pencil sizes. Or here we go, they get really big. Drawing here on top of that. Get a highlighter and you've got this magic and wow, kids love that. It's quite annoying. And you get the eraser. But if I'm over here and I have a certain marker, I might want to change the color. 
and here we go, there's the color change. Or sometimes I want to zoom in. And let's see, let's zoom in or zoom out. And I can also add pages. So this is like adding a slide in uh, PowerPoint or slides. So we've got new text. It's text. And jump between the two slides. If I go into the text here, and I've got different features down here. I can change the style, I can change the order, like whether it's in front or back, and lock, add links, and duplicate that, move that around. Let's see, I'm going to change the style here, black. Change this style here too, but I'm going to change the color. Now you can see, okay, that's in behind. Maybe I want to change the order bring it to front so you can see what I mean there uh, adding pages now you might not be finished with this but you want to come back you don't want the kids to publish or see things yet for so the rest of the class or you can't see it you can save it as a draft or they can check mark which means they're like handing it in okay. I'm just gonna uh, not save that not do anything you've got, also got the back button here and then you get more functions under here you can play around with shapes and backgrounds and links and voice and all fun different things in there. Okay, I'm going to delete that. Delete and start over. You've also got video that kids can do. When they press on the video, make sure they put their iPads down uh, because if they're just touching and holding their iPads, you get a lot of extra noise sometimes. If they are taking video where they want to be moving around, make sure they move extra slow. Uh, about three times as slow as they want to, as they think they should be moving the camera. Otherwise, they're getting a lot of camera shake and they're making people sick when they're watching the video. Uh, so tell them to slow down. When they go into upload or you go into upload, make sure that you ensure that students allow access and enable the uploads. And you can upload uh, files from your drive, photos, videos, and upload multiple photos at one time. You can come in to add notes and just type notes uh, and then you can copy that maybe kids want to type on those notes as well and finally you can add links to certain websites certain videos and it pops the screenshot of the opening uh, in there when you add a link in okay finally you've got this and I'm going to put this in here this is how to um, use progress. We'll watch this video, but I'm going to put this video in Google Classroom for now. Uh, that's the end of this, and we're going to do more about creating activities on another time because activities is its own thing. Here's the video to progress.